the dream of TVR ownership is bright sun, roof off, V8 burble, wind in your hair. The reality is stuck behind a Hyundai with an outplay on it and a cyclist. So taking the Chimera on its last uh, test drive, it's had a few already, it's done 20, well, nearly 28 miles of testing now. I try and put, I normally try and put about 50 on them at least. If it's a car I don't trust as much, I'd, it'd be a bit more, but get quite good vibes off this one to be honest. Um, it's really just a case of going out, making sure it's driving as it's meant to, making sure that all, you know, it's not overheating, the oil pressure doesn't play silly buggers, all the controls work, that kind of thing. Uh, I have had a couple of issues with it already, only minor ones, the brakes were squealing their nuts off at one point, but that seems to have stopped. So that might just be the new pads bedding in. And, um, the tracking was a long way out as well and I've tried to rectify that as best I can and I thought I'd nailed it but on the drive here I realized that it's still slightly off center so that's why the wheels oh there you go the brakes are squealing again so I need warm up oh no they've got no stopped again yeah uh, I think you're just gonna have to do a, a few hundred miles of them but yeah the steering's slightly off center well, it's a lot better around this roundabout than a Citroen CX with no power steering. I must have lost count of the number of these cars I've driven. Uh, I honestly, I couldn't remember. Many. The funny thing is, a lot of people say all TVRs, you know, there's no two TVRs that are the same. I think it's I don't think that's right because maybe with some of the older ones sure but you know the Chimera was quite well productionized really compared to some of the others and it just feels like a Chimera to drive and if you got out of this one and got into another one it would probably feel like a Chimera again so you know I'm not I don't really buy that I think there's more to it than that but it feels good the driving position in these cars is just it's almost unique I don't know many other cars that feel the way these do I don't mean all TVRs in general but certainly everything from the Griffith onwards they've got this kind of it's like the transmission tunnel it's got this big bulbous transmission tunnel and then you've got all the swoops and curves and you can see the, the vents down the side of the bonnet and you know you get a, a quality view and you sit quite low in the seat and there's nothing else like it really you know you've got a short stubby little gear lever meaty in feel a steering wheel that's slightly off centre oh no that's, this, that's just this one there's this feel to them and when you're stuck on roads like this doing 50 mile an hour and 1950 rpm it's not really using it but there's a lot of fun to be had when you're in lower gears using the torque, you pin your foot down, the bonnet rises up, it's like a little mini muscle car really, there's a horrible bump here, I'm not going to judge it to the same standards I judge the Citroens when I bring them down here, because that would be unfair, oh. but there's no real rattles, nothing's really falling off, there's a little bit of some of the vinyl and leather is coming unstuck in places, but let us not forget this car is 22 years old, 23 years old, 24 actually could be it could be 24 and it's this is original this is as they were the only thing that's different in here is this dashboard which I'm not massive on I'm not I get why people go for them because the original veneer cracks off it's a metal dash and then all the veneer just chips away and it's expensive to get it done there's a horrible bump coming this is gonna hurt oh oh jeez you go over that in a Citroen XM and you don't know it's there. It's bizarre. I'm not going to say the Chimera rides badly. I don't think it does. I think it's quite a nice ride. It's quite, it's quite supple. 
the thing that's easy to forget when you're driving one of these is you're basically sat on a back axle so the rear wheels are like a foot from my ass at the moment whereas if you were in a normal saloon or something like that you'd be sitting there at the front wheels and if you're smack bang in the middle of the wheelbase that's the best ride you can have um, you know this is this is not because I'm sat at the back but then I'm equalizing the weight because the engine is just behind the front wheels and the gearbox is here next to me it's uh, it, you know in terms of weight distribution it probably I haven't weighed one of these yet I weighed the chassis on this car on its own and I did intend to weigh the whole car but I haven't had a chance but obviously I can weigh another one and figure out how much the body weighs fully dressed and how much the chassis weighs fully dressed and then you know I've got my weights then and I can see what the what you know the weight distribution is if I'm bored and can't sleep one night or something but it seems to be driving nicely the fella's driving this back uh, well, he's in the west country somewhere I think so he's got a few miles to do tomorrow but I've no reason to worry I've got the window down it's not normally this windy the window going up the window switches are hidden down here you can often hear the diff in these cars as well because it is right there behind my elbow it's uh, pretty much behind well, it's underneath that parcel shelf behind me, so... But they drive, they drive nice, you know, squeaky brakes aside. The brakes are straight out of a Ford Sierra, I mean, they are thoroughly conventional. The steering column is from a Vauxhall Cavalier Mark III, as you can probably tell by the stalks, it hasn't had the alloy upgrades fitted. This particular car's got TVR's own switch gear. They did start branching into going their own way. So you've got headlights down here, which is a rotary dial, which is a lovely little thing to use. You've got a push button there for rear fog light, one over there for hazards. Up here on the dashboard, you've got the heater controls, and this is quality, because you, you click it like that, it's a push button. So you click it on and off, and that turns the fan on and off, and then to change the speed of the fan, you rotate it like that oh and then that's the uh, hot cold that's set to cold at the moment uh, windscreen or footwell there's no in your face I don't think on this one that's a brilliant place to stop isn't it yeah there's no in your face let's have a look is there an in your face I don't think there is put it on hot It'll take a while for it to come through What about these ones? Are they hot? Got some vents down here where the window switches are, of course. Nothing really coming through those, which is good. No, nope, that's good. Well, they don't really work. And then this one is this just fresh air or is this? Put it on a feet and try again. Alright, well that's doing nothing, it seems. Ah, oh, no, that's blowing hot air. There you go, so the one down by my f my left, uh, my right knee, is blowing hot air. And the ones down here, oh, they're blowing hot air as well. See, so some of the others, that's, those are only fresh air. This is the content you came for, isn't it? No, let's not see what the heat is like. Let's... 2,000 RPM, 30 mile an hour. 40, 50, 60. That wasn't full throttle. It's not bad because this is the baby one. At best, this has probably got this car, I would guess, about 200 horsepower, maybe 210. The book figure is higher than that, but it doesn't work like that. You've got to be a little bit careful because they are. They're not as you know, they're not widow makers like people make out. They don't have any aids, any traction control, anything like that. But you know, they are quite grippy. And to be honest, the thing it will do most is understeer. It only really kicks the back out if you start doing silly things with your foot. So it, it's basically 
I don't know why this guy's doing 35. Oh. I'm going to do something silly with my foot. I mean, I've got one of these cars. I think these cars are great. They're really underrated for touring as well. Couldn't you get this seat? I mean, I haven't really set the seat up, but if you get the seat comfy, you can drive a long way in them. They're a great way to see the countryside. You can take the roof off. And go and go and explore Wales. Go and explore Scotland. Go and explore France. You know, they're not even that bad on fuel on a run. Slippy here. But the problem with these cars is that, like, 60 mile an hour, you're doing not many revs, and you're just waiting. You're just driving around waiting. The only way you're going to get a lot of fun is if you go ham either hammering it at high speed, in which case you might kill yourself, kill someone else, or just get in trouble, or you just drive slowly, or, or take it on a track day, but that gets very expensive, and you know, you can't do it every day, I don't know, and this is the slowest one, they did a 4.3, which is actually probably the pick of the bunch, they did a 4.5, which was actually a 4.6, and they did a 5 litre, which was TVR's own crankshaft in a Rover V8 so it was like a Rover V8 but TVR went their own way with it and I mean this one being the baby plenty fast enough in, you know in modern modern car terms it's not that fast I think you know a modern hot hatch would dispatch it pretty easily 500 it might have a bit more trouble with but it's just it's just the in gear surge you know I drove the first POV drive I did in the TVR and I will try and do all the TVRs but the first one I did in a TVR was a 390 SE, um, which, although is a 3.9 Rover V8, and this is a 3.9 Rover V8, it's a different one. And the 390 SE was much more kind of, it was made for driving hard. This one isn't. This is basically a Bogo standard 3.9 Rover V8, as you would get in a Discovery. TVR did put their own. Uh, profile camshaft in it um, and apparently they did some work on the heads but I don't know how much there was other than that this didn't do much to it no ABS be careful when you slam the brakes on I mean, this is quite a quiet one, if I'm honest. This is a standard Chimera. It's absolutely bog standard. The only thing that's different in this car is the fact it's got poly bushes, which in reality are no harder or firm. Is that road ahead actually closed? My route, my circuit is closed. Oh no. Ah, I can. That's the easiest turn into that road I've ever done. But yeah, that's the, the, that'd be the problem. You can't really use it. I mean, with other cars, you can drive them hard and not be speeding, which is fun. Whereas if you drive this hard, if I drive it hard here, I'm gonna end up in that bush. And if I drive it hard carefully, I'm just going to be going way too fast. And I'm making it all muddy. And that's it. That's all you can do. And it is addictive. Third gear especially is good. Third gear is is the gear. I mean, it is with most cars, isn't it? But oh, it's muddy down here again. <sighs> I did this before, didn't I? I went out in that 390 SE and got absolutely covered in mud. But I haven't gone that same way today, and yet I'm getting covered in mud. This is the road I normally go down. But yeah, you've got to be careful. It's a little, yeah, you know, it's greasy like this. 
and low sun as well. Steering is very direct. I mean, it's 2.2 turns lock to lock. If you get this one's got power steering. If you get one without power steering, it's a little bit more. It's about 2.5, just to reduce the weight a little bit. They actually feel nicer on roads like this. The cars without power steering, I would say, feel nicer. It isn't brimming with steering feel. It's not got a lot of feedback through the wheel. It's got a bit, but it's not. It's nothing like. Well, a lot of old sports cars really, even just old normal cars. But yeah, it's a little bit detached, but... Because you've got to remember, it is kind of like a Tourer. I mean, it doesn't, I know it sounds stupid saying that, but... This was the slightly softer version of the platform. The Griffith was slightly harder, slightly more performance focused. This has got a big boot and it's supposed to be slightly softer and it is but it is you know it's made for I didn't really need to change in a second there I was being a bit aggressive yeah see second gear they can it like that I was pinned in second gear if that was a 500 it'd be squirming and trying to light the wheels up and the 400 won't they're actually quite they're quite nice to flow from bend to bend I don't, they're quite easy to drive. Right, I'm gonna go careful. Oh, it's not this one, is it? It's the next one. This has got really rough, this bump. It's just the torque, you don't need to rev it. I think it revs to about 5,800. Some of them rev to about 6,000, 6,100, but there's no need. There you go. That's it. There's your lot. Everything after that is illegal and irresponsible. But the value for money that these cars represent is just ridiculous. You know, I've got a friend at the moment, Alex, the one who swears a lot in the uh, Festival of the Unexceptional video. And he's trying to sell his, which is a nice example, a T Reg in uh, Crystal Verde, which is a light metallic green, very light metallic green, with a contrasting dark metallic green roof, and dark metallic green interior, and even with light metallic green interior? dark green roof, dark green interior with light green carpet, it's not metallic, and uh, the dials are like mint green, very very subtle, lovely, lovely colour combo, but he's not shifting it, it's not going, and he's got it up very cheap, I think it's, for one of these it's about 13,750 I think, well there's someone in my spot look, but it doesn't matter, I normally stop here and have a look around the car, but I'm not going to because I'm at work, and I've got other stuff to be doing. But yeah, they're just, they're so cheap for what they are. I mean, if you want this level of performance from another car, it's kind of Boxster S performance, I would say. S2000, Porsche Boxster S, that kind of performance, maybe a bit better in, you know, in gear. And it's not just how fast it goes, it's how it goes fast. That's always been my saying for TVRs. They're not actually, when you uh, yeah, when you time them and compare them to other cars, and they're not actually some of them are, but cars like this aren't actually that fast. I got into all sorts of skirmishes with my first one when I was young, but it doesn't matter. It's not about that. It's the smile on your face. And I'm now at the point where I would probably want more than a 400. Well, I've got a 400, and I would like more than a 400. I would probably want a 430. Um, or something like that, you know, and, and with a slightly fruitier cam and a little bit of tweaking, they're, they're a nice machine. But a 400 is perfectly ample. 
Oh look, a Reliant something or other. Is that a Rialto? And then this San Primera up here, look. Wow. And a Fiesta Mark III. Wow. One of the problems you got with driving these cars is trying to drive them smoothly at low speeds. Because I, I coined the term, or the analogy, uh, in my um, in my book, which you can buy at all good bookshops and bad ones, probably, and Amazon. Um, I said that it's like the problem with this engine is it's like trying to knock a nail into the wall with a sledgehammer. So it's like you've got a car that weighs about a thousand kilos, putting a a big V8 in it. Quite hard to drive at low speeds, but if you want to go faster, again, that's 35 mile an hour. Should we pin it? 35 mile an hour. That's flat out. 60. Not very dramatic, really, is it? Well, so far the test is going well. Uh, we're at 44 miles completed now. Oil pressure showing at. 45 psi not that i mean that's an electric gauge so it's not going to be that accurate i'm not going to worry too much about what it says so the ignition key is voxel because the column the upper column is from a cavalier mark iii as it is in a lotus elise quite a few cars use it it's because it's got a built-in adjuster so you can adjust the which probably shouldn't do where you're driving gearbox is uh, in this car it's a borg warner or Tremec, uh, however you like your companies, um, T5, so it's a pretty standard box used in a lot of American stuff, a lot of Australian stuff, uh, two-wheel drive Sierra Cosworth, same box that TVI used right up to the end, right up to the Cigaris. The early Chimeras had an LT77 Rover box, you can tell those because the door twist knob is in the gator with the gear lever. And people see them as a down. Well, it is a downgrade on the T5. The T5 is much better, but the um, the, the LT feels fine. You can you can set them up to have quite a nice shift. I have four liter. They're perfectly strong enough. And four point three or five liter, uh, pushing it slightly, perhaps, but. Well, the Chimera didn't change a huge amount over the years. I mean, there were differences. Obviously, there are differences with the back end. This car doesn't have Fiesta Mark III rear lights. And it does have the open grille at the front, like a Cerbera. Uh, it doesn't have the mesh. The bonnet as well. You can see the bonnet here, behind the wipers. It kind of flutes up. It's got like a raise in it. Um, the one on my Chimera, which is a 95, doesn't have that raised sort of kick it's just flat to the top the dials change but the dials are actually the same as in my chimera the later chimera has got a, a digital odometer a, a few variations on the, the font and mechanical gauges used and the early ones there was more variation and then again mine's got different same layout really but mine's got different switch gear here it's just got three push buttons for the lights um, it works better this way to be honest the build is better on the later cars i think the chassis is better on the early cars i think the early cars if they're in good condition i think they drive better i honestly do i think the early ones are a little, there's just a bit more fluidity to them and the gkn differential that they use is um it's a torsion diff it's a a torque sensing diff so it, it works really well and the BTR in this is, it's all right. It's a little bit clunky. And it's a, they're a little bit slower to react. So they don't lock up quite as nicely or progressively, but they're stronger. They can take more grunt. And they don't leak every five minutes. And you can get bits for them. Well, you could, I don't know if you can now. Ah, uh, look, Portsmouth. A wretched hive of scum and villainy. But it's just there, you know, it's a lovely place to sit, very comfortable. You've got this lovely sort of legs out driving position. Steering wheel falls lovely to your to your you know to your lap. It's uh, controls are all there. Gear shift is in a, a perfect place and it's a lovely shift. 
it's a real stubby mechanical change it doesn't go directly into the gearbox it's got TVI had to make their own remote linkage which sits on top of the gearbox I didn't really want to put the wipers on because I've cleaned the car but the car is getting dirty already so I'm going to use the washers the washers are built into the arm original TVR Chimeras and Griffiths used the windscreen washer uh, system the bar the rail from Citroen BX and Peugeot 405 the rear view mirror is also the same as the Citroen BX and Peugeot 405 uh, what do I say good overlap no triangular doom apparently although they work quite well in this car the wipers they're sort of got two speeds they cover quite nicely and they park but uh, some of the earlier ones are a little bit more clunky in their operation wow oh, nice. that's see one of the problems in driving a car like this and especially well these kind of cars is you do when you get stuck behind people you find you get stuck behind people a lot and it's a bit clunky to drive at low speeds and that can make it frustrating kind of like the opposite of a Citroen C6 really I mean you just sit back and relax it's quite a nice day really what's that oh a Lexus SC430 well, there you go that's all I know about those so yeah this car is um, pretty much there I would say it's, uh, it's certainly feeling okay I mean I never drove it that's one of the disadvantages of them coming to me in bits you'd think that would make it easier because it's like some of the work's done for you and the guy who took this car apart the guy who owns it he, he bagged everything he tagged everything he you know he did it the right way and yet it still seems to take longer for some reason it shouldn't but it does like when it's not when it's not your method I think it's because if you, when you take something apart you kind of make take a mental picture of where it all went and they, they do vary slightly in their layout and this car is um, I don't know how it drove before I don't know how smooth it was how heavy the controls were I put a lighter clutch master cylinder in it not a master cylinder sorry slave cylinder I put a new clutch master cylinder in it slave cylinder is a bigger ball one that should make the pedal lighter um, it's not heavy actually it's not too bad it's not light it's not as light as they can be but then I don't know I've, I've put a clutch in it as well I don't know what clutch it is I, he supplied it to me so oh I need to check the handbrake don't I I can't do that though are they open yeah they're open I can't stop my handbrake place and we're slowing down again one of the things I do like about sitting in these cars at traffic lights actually it's the only thing I like is that you can see the heat haze coming out of the vents on the bonnet and you can hear the gearbox chattering away. oh no that's not a good thing what's the handbrake like I'll do the handbrake here not too bad you can normally only get three clicks out of it or we score that one it's not a horrible click is it I'm gonna give that a seven I can't remember what I gave Betty, so I, I don't know what the consistency is in my scoring. But yeah, I think that'll wrap this one up. I think test drive complete. I'm going to stick a bit more fuel in it. And uh, yeah, next time we go out for a drive, it will probably be another TVR. One that is much worse than this. In Oh look, a Rover 21 something or other. Yeah, it'll be another TVR which is objectively worse, but I will quite like it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Remember to buy a Chimera.